Welcome to Old School Garage, today's episode on the NEC Birmingham Classic Car Show. I'm in a hall where all you can see is Fords. They are beautiful. Let's have a look around in this section. How you doing, buddy? It's Boris. How Boris, I'm um, Lee. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you, Lee. Uh, Ford Owners Club, mm -hmm. X-Rock, as I've seen it. Uh, and we've walked past your lovely car. It's an XR3i Mark IV. Mm -hmm. So tell us about it. How long you had it? Uh, I've had it for five, five years now. Five, nearly six years. Uh, I bought it from a, a guy in Solihull. And when I got it, it was in pretty poor condition. A bit, a bit of uh, damaged car park, as I call it, car park scratches. Right. Uh, it leaked, it was leaking oil. <laughs> Which and they do. They always do. And uh, basically, it took me five years to get it to that condition, really. It looks like brand new, really. And uh, I joined the owners club with this, because of this. I joined the XR owners club. And we go to all the showrooms now, so we're just like right. one big family. Yes, because we've got the lovely cab. Yep, that's that behind one's us cab. as well. That's a lovely cab. Beautiful shine on that. Yes, it looks like brand new as well. It's really, really good. Shiny. Really pretty car. And we come to this Fiesta XR2, which you tell, told me about off the camera. Yep. This never had any paint. Not this in is its all, life. all factory. That's as it was made from, from Ford. It's even got the additional security locks on. What? That's factory Ford? Hmm? Really? And all the plastics, original, every single thing. Yeah, I know these trims do fade mine. Yeah, yeah, they, they get sun bleach. Yes. Still, pepper pot alloys is like brand new on it, and all but the interior you, is just like. You just <laughs> look down the shine, you can just see it's, it's beautiful. I know. It's just an amazing looking car. And the interior is all original. Yeah. And we also got another XR3. Yep, this belongs to Wayne. Uh, it's uh, an F Reg, so it's a 88, 80, yeah, it is 87, 88. And he's, Wayne's fully refurbed it. Right. It's had a nut and bolt restoration. Factory sunroof as well? Yeah. They work? Yeah, it, goes t it tilts and then it goes back. Because they do play up. I know those plastic bits do can dry out in them. They and dry they, out and they, they crack, do crack. And yeah. then it, it, it's bad luck if it if it's open when it happens because you can't shut it. Yeah, because I had that experience with Fords when you can't lock it up all the way because they yeah. just keep skipping and skipping and skipping. So I, I do. I was I actually do. fortunate with mine because when I got mine, it would tilt, but it wouldn't go back. Right. And then one day I was just messing around playing with it and it repaired itself. It's like the car what mends itself. It's brilliant. And it just, everything just worked on it. Superly. Thanks for showing us your your car and your club cars, mm -hmm. they are lovely. Thank you very much. No, thank you for your time, Boris. Thank you. Cheers.
Hello, buddy. It's hey. Boris. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice well, to meet you too. Yeah. I'm the uh, secretary of the Renault Owners Club. All right. Mm. Um, I, I sh can I just cut to the chase? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the Twingo. Uh, yeah, the Twingo. Um, it was conceived by um, a former Renault engineer uh, as a project, and uh, when I first heard about it and spoke to him, I, I said, "Why did you do it?" And he said, "To prove that I could." or more, more accurately to find out if I could and uh, he certainly he pulled it off but uh, yeah it's a it is a one-off it's uh, quite, a, quite an incredible machine I mean, he's driven it here from um, Cambridgeshire uh, with uh, well, the Norfolk border he lives near Wisbeach in uh, his Norfolk Cambridgeshire border he, he drove it here yesterday um, gorgeous little thing yeah so Originally, it was a, a Mark I Twingo with a blown engine that he imported, I think, from Belgium, but I, I might be wrong, I might have been Portugal. Not that there's any connection there, of course, but I just don't remember which It's not country. France. It That's wasn't France. Exactly. No, it definitely wasn't France. Um, and, uh, and he had a, a written off, you know, a, a crashed Mark II Twingo. Um, so he's taken the 1.2 litre turbo engine and gearbox out of the front of a Mark II Twingo and installed it in the back of a Mark I Twingo. Which, what you do? Yeah, as, <laughs> as, a, as a kind of homage to the Renault 5 turbo. Turbo, yeah. yeah. And uh, one, one interesting thing he told me about it was that um, he, he dropped the whole sub front subframe out with the engine and gearbox and then went to the back to see how he might be able to make mountains to make it fit and it turned out the mountains were exactly the same for the front the subframe as the back front subframe and it just bolted straight in <laughs> you couldn't dream that up no, is it no fantastic but I, I guess there were probably production benefits of that when they were building the car because it was designed to be built cheaply originally so if it's got the same subframe front and back it, it helps save costs doesn't it so, uh, yeah. So, um, so yeah. Obviously, he's had to fabricate quite a, li a bit of bodywork and uh, make everything. Yeah, yeah, make it all work. Yeah. Um, it, it's got a gear linkage from a Toyota MR2. Um, right. Because, because the because engine is in the back and exists. Yeah. That's a that's a mid-engine car as well. He said, uh, "Why bother making a gear linkage when somebody else makes one for you?" Somebody made, yeah. somebody invented yeah, the wheel. Yeah, Why yeah, was the point to yeah, reinvent it again, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. So, uh, so that's it. I don't really know what else I can tell you about it. So, tell us about uh, your club, your Renault club. Yeah, um, yeah, we're the Renault Owners Club. Um, we're the second oldest Renault club in the world. Uh, we're a few months younger than the one in um, New South Wales in Australia. Uh, wow. That they were founded, I think, five months before we were. Um, so it's only just a little bit of yeah, it. Yeah, and uh, we were founded in 1952, uh, so we celebrated our 70th anniversary last year. Wow, congratulations. But originally, it was, um, it was formed by uh, people who, who owned um, mainly the, um, what the French call the 4CV, and we called the 750 here, which was actually built in the UK. Um, in uh, in the factory in Acton, uh, which during the war had um, refurbished marine engines for the navy. Um, right. Okay. And uh, so yeah, um, so so they, they were like British built cars, but they were very quirky. But they were often used in competition, and of course, eventually that model led to the, um, the um, Jean Redelais Alpine brand. You know, that, they were based on the uh, the original four CVs. Um, so uh, you know, that's was, that was how the club was formed, but uh, we've continued to accept you know, new models as they've come out. We're not a classic car club. You can join the Renault Owners Club if you've just driven right. out of the showroom in a new Megane. Um, okay, and, so it's not limited uh, yeah. to, like, you have to have, like, pre-90 cars? No, or... no, no, not with our club. I mean, yeah, we share in the stand with our, our friends at the Renault Classic Car Club, and they, they have a cut-off of 25 years old. It's got to be... T Which is understandable. Like, yeah, yeah, because they're the Classic Car Club. And, uh, yeah, to be honest, that a lot of their focus is on rear-engine cars, where, where we're probably... what. You know, we have we have a lot of members with what you might call modern classics, things like obviously Renault fives, um, elevens, uh, you know, nineteens, Megans, 
all sorts. Renault 5 is uh, more than 40 years old now. Yeah, it, my, mine, mine is just turned 40. I've just got it um, tax and MOT exam. So it's year. quite a historic so, yeah. vehicle yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robert, thank you very much yeah, for showing okay. us your cars and talk about your yeah. club as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Peter, it's Boris. Hello. How nice are you? to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Yeah. We're standing by this beautiful Alpine 110, yes. A110. Yes. Uh, tell us about it. This particular car was used in several seasons, 1971 onwards, in the World Rally Championship. So this is the, the this car. This is a genuine car, which, as you'll see there, took part in the Rally de Maroc in 1971, and then would have would have been probably rebuilt by the factory for subsequent years, providing it wasn't damaged, of course. Wow. So, so this is a genuine car owned by a club member who re regularly uses this in hill climbs and sprints. So. It's in beautiful condition, it is. but he's used regularly in competition by one of our club members. So it's not, not a statue it in is, somebody's it home? It is not a museum piece. It is not a museum piece. Fair play to your uh, yeah, yeah. club member because yes. I think cars meant to be used. Not exactly, exactly. People say you shouldn't use an old car because it's the maintenance, but it's there to be enjoyed. That's that, what they that's, built that's for. That's the thrill, of, the thrill of having an Alpine. There's always something to do on an Alpine. So you're... It's been in a club for a long time, this car? This, I've been the secretary of, of the club since 1993. Right. Okay. We established the club in, in 1988, and I joined in 1990. So, and I'm the secretary for my sins. So 30 years of involvement with Alpines. Okay, and what car are you driving? Which one is yours? None of these are mine, sorry. Okay. I have, I have three Alpines at home. One of these and two of the lighter models. Oh, the modern? Mo no, the A310, A610. I have one of no, each at home. Okay. Yeah. I thought you had the latest modern. No, oh, no, no, no. Okay. It may well be that one day some have to go for one of those. Yes, but it's really nice collection of cars in oh, here. Oh, yes, very much so. Very much yes. so. So we no. got, this is a factory car. The one behind us. Yes. It's a replica. It is. Okie dokie. We got the modern one in here as well. Yes. And, and, and the two other cars, again, yeah. um, they weren't factory cars, ordinary standard Berlinettes. But as you can see, you can't see. The other car there is, is again, is a track car. It's been converted over the years, developed by the owner, very quick, again, used. Covid intervened, but has been regularly used in club championship hill climbs. So it's been to the ones that you would know, Prescott, Shelsley Walsh, etc. So again, owners and the other car, not an X-Works car, but in similar conditions to this. Again, the owner uses that regularly in competition. Fair play to him. They yes. should be used. Yes, absolutely. So, what? One new one, three out of the other four are regularly used in competition. Fair play, that's what I like to hear, yeah. because they better better to be used than being a statue Absolutely. altogether. Absolutely. Great to meet you, Peter. All right. Thank you very None much. To you. Here is some cool looking t-shirt design. You can buy it on Amazon.com, Amazon.co.uk, and every purchase you make, you're helping my channel growing. I leave the link in description.
Hello, buddy. It's Boris. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm Richie. Hi, Richie. We got these uh, the thing going yeah. on in here. <laughs> so tell us about it. What's what's happening in here? So obviously in the UK we call them Volkswagen Trekkers. The right. Americans call them things. Uh, I think it's Kluberwagen in Germany. Yes, it and is. in Mexico it's Safari. So they've got a few different names, but we've um, a few. There's quite a few in the UK, but you just don't see them. So it's the first time we was offered a stand. So we just thought we'd bring a mix up of different variations of of the, of the styles, I suppose. So can we just start from the right hand side? Yeah, yeah. We got this army looking drop down with some nice alloy wheels. Yeah. What's, what's so the story this, this, this belongs one? to Lee at Volks Magic. He is also part of Run to the Sun, which is down in Newquay. So he's not long had this, but it turns out it's actually an original right hand drive one, which is quite, there's another yellow one over the other side there, but they only made a handful in the UK and they gave them to each dealership. Okay. So there's not many around, so it's quite rare actually. And he picks it up quite cheap, which is lucky. Um, the green one is my other one. Um, that's, that's your personal one? That's, yeah, that's my personal one. That's a drag racing car. It was built on TV years ago. Um, and uh, it used to run 10.5 at Santa Pod. So yeah, it doesn't now. Um, it's only got a small engine at the moment, but we're about to put a big lump in it and, and hopefully get back down to and saying, 13. and saying that, you making this on your own channel as well? Yes, yeah, on our so channel. Viewers can find Richie on? Yeah, on Revo's Hub. If you look at Revo's Hub on, his, on, on YouTube as well, you'll see our channel. Yeah, or well, that way it's a bit bigger. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, we're starting to, uh, we've got different areas on the channel anyway, but we're going to try and have a little separate part for the drag racing, because it's new to us as well. We've done it a couple of times, but um, now we've got a big engine coming, it should be quite interesting again. But um, yeah, this one's a guy, guy called Pete. Um, he's his more jacked up, obviously, suspension-wise. I, I need to ask, actually, I'm not sure if this is an Indonesian model, or I can't remember, because right. they did make them. I mean, the Indonesian army still use them as their oh, vehicles. So that's why they raised yeah, up, because well, just to go over uh, yeah, the certain uh, terrain. It might be a little bit higher, but they use them as their military cars still. Um, so it's, again, it's a bit different. It's got the bikini top on. Um, then there's my, my other one, my main one, which I've had for about eight years. It's drop down uh, gorgeous, isn't it? That's full custom. It, it was an army colour. Um, I sandblasted it and just lacquered it, so it's bare metal. Um, I built a new hard top for it. We, we managed to find an original hard top, and I did a mould and reproduced them. So that's got the hard top on, which is, mm, I think there's a couple in the UK. Um, then it's on hydro, uh, Raven Hydraulics, so it's on hydraulic suspension as well. Um, there's a few rare bits from America I've brought over. It's, I've had that a while, but I'll never sell that car. So I don't care what I spend on it, really. But, That's your baby. Yeah, it used to be a, a radio car. So hence, you know, like the aerials. Yeah, I'm just about to ask why, yeah. why we got the fishing rod on it. Yeah, well, the, sometimes they have two. And these are the short ones. So okay. they're like radio comms cars. So they have the big antennas on the back. But yeah, I've got one on that. Um, obviously, where the radios used to sit, I've got the hydraulics. Um, and this one's Josh, he's a local guy, lives around the corner. Um, he's, he's still military spec. Um, he's trying to keep it as original as possible. It was left hand drive, but he's converted right. it to right. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's always ongoing projects. So basically you spend some money on it to put it on the other side, you know? Yeah, so he's just, yeah, but it's the rest easy of to them, do. Yeah, I guess because there's not much to it, isn't no. it? I, on, the, the on the front beam, you just swap it over on the beam. And that's you, it. you just move everything across, yeah. It's quite straightforward. And I see it's still, Completely original, so even yeah, the yeah. rust is original. Yeah, so yeah, it's not he doesn't, he doesn't whatsoever. clean it, doesn't wash it. Is it yeah. not? No, no. I think he cleans his wheels now because he's putting new wheels on. That's the only thing he cleans, he says. Right. But yeah, but okay. it's kind of a true. I mean, mine's still got the army seats in, but they're falling apart now. But that's the only original bit on it, other than the, the few little bits. But it's nice to see an original military one as well, then, isn't it? Cause like I said, there's a good variation, really. There is a few more in the UK that are all different types. But obviously, we only could have enough space for for five cars, really. So, but yeah, it's good. Super. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for showing us. No, that's right. The viewer can find Rich, as yeah. I said. Reverse hub. Thank you, Richie. That's no, right. Nice one. Thank you, dude. Hello, buddy. How you doing? Hi, uh, you're right. How are you doing? Uh, my name's Lee. Lee. Hi, yeah. Lee. Uh, we stand in front of a beautiful Corrado. You do. You do. Amazing Corrado Which by is a JMR. More random than the normal ones. Yeah, just a little bit. Because it's the stance is a bit wider than the factory one, as I yeah. remember. 
So tell us about it. So this one's uh, from JMI, JMI Motorsport from John Mitchell. Um, this fella has supported Classic VW on so from the start. So we're only all right, we're at the NEC to get him in here and get involved. And he brought this amazing car down and it's, what can I say? It's probably the only Corrado I've ever seen, what looks like that with a wide boy. It's four wheel drive from the Golf Rally and it's a 16 valve turbo. So the charger's gone, disappeared. I don't know what happened to that. They lost the charger and now it's got the big boy turbo on. So it's running approximately 575 brake. Now I'm led to believe by JMO that it was a bit more than that, but it didn't like it. So it this just, is the 1800 engine? It's the, yeah, 16 valve, yep. Yeah, wow. Supercharged engine. It's all been done up. JMO has absolutely fantastic job on it. And yeah, it's 570 odd brake. It's amazing. And uh, I've seen you part of the classic Volkswagen Owners Club, yep. so where our viewers can find you. Um, so if you uh, go on uh, www.classicvideoonestud.com, we're on there and we're on uh, Facebook as well. Uh, Facebook's a fantastic place to meet all people from all walks of life doing all this. So yeah, this so is what we do. Uh, how many How many Volkswagen owners you got followers? You know, twenty-seven thousand. So and we we go nowhere. We got over to Norway to see friends over there. We've been London, over to the Isle of Man, the Isle of Man TT. We go over there to see people over there, so we get a bit of everything now. Yeah, and I love it. I love it. It's brilliant, mate. Appreciate that, buddy. No, cheers, cheers dude. Mate. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Hello buddy, how are you doing? My name is Boris. Uh, my name is Arthur. Arthur, you uh, sounds familiar from my neck of the wood. Ah, yes, I'm from Poland. <laughs> uh, nice to meet you, Boris. I, uh, how, how are you like in the NEC? First Berlin. time in here. First, first time. First time in here. I used to go to AMTS in Hungary. Okay. Which is similar size. I don't know if you've ever been in there. No, no, never biggest been. Show, one of them, the biggest show in Europe. Oh, nice. Yes, nice. it's, it's, it's to, pretty big. I have to go there. <laughs> yes. So, Arthur, because me and you coming from probably the same childhood, is, yes. I spent most of them my childhood in a back of Yeah, it was these. my first car, and uh, when, the, when I was uh, drove with uh, my parents, I was in the back, like all the kids, and uh, we go to Balaton, uh, you know. Lake Balaton, yeah, yeah, yeah fantastic, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, Fiat 126 is a, is a big part of the history in Poland. Uh, it's a fantastic car for me, personally. I love this car. I am big. I'm not fit pretty well now, but I was drove in July, uh, one, one of uh, Fiat to uh, Portugal from Poland in the five days. Yeah, charity fantastic. rally. Yeah, that fantastic. was a challenge. Yeah, I'm still feeling the back pain, but, <laughs> but it, was, it was good. So let's talk about this beauty in here. Oh, this one. This one is a special car um, because that was made for the TV show in Poland. Uh, oh. 11 weeks, uh, that one of the, our guests, he had 11 weeks, uh, pretty small budget to make this car. Um, and it was like a competition in the TV. He right. won, no, he lose, but uh, he should won because the engine, is a big secret. The engine in the in that car is the one in the world, yeah. Because uh, this engine is a prototype which was made in 1980s by the Polish constructor, Polish engineer, and uh, this engine is uh, have a, um, a quick cam on the top. That head, uh, the engine head, was made custom. Uh, based on the prototype. Never been in a car before, 
because uh, it was the communism, it was a really, really big uh, troubles and they made this engine and they put in a bin. And after right. one survived and the guy who designed and made this, find this engine and they copy that, find the engineer, which is uh, 70 uh, years old, and they work for the BMW, bring him to Poland, show him, look, I made this car, and the name, this project, is a Fiat 126 OHC Mruz, because the Mruz is a surname of that engineer. Wow, okay. Is That's it really interesting huge? because you can, I, I've, I've been following Fiat 126s and yeah. personally I never actually seen a picture no, of the, the, definitely or anything not. like that. No. I mean, I've seen them modifying and you know, I know you Paul, yeah, like you're racing yeah. them and you oh, modify we, the engines. We do. But, <laughs> a lot. I know, I know, I know. I've seen the loads of the rolling over. I've never, never seen something like that. No. Never. This is the prototype, one on the vault, one in the vault. It's yeah. fantastic looking. Yes, is is it bring more uh, lots of attention, you know? Uh, because I bet. we we have a uh, lots of cars which they are unique, <laughs> which uh, brings us to the next vehicle, yes. which is a uh, which is called Bombel. Okay, Bombel is like a bubble, right? Uh, because I've never seen one, you know. That's why I'm amazed because you, I don't know what you to couldn't. call it. You couldn't because it was prototype. Never uh, all the history is in here. Never been in the serial production. It was made the prototype. Right. Uh, not many, not many, um, not many cars was made, and there was drove only on the factory roads. Right. Uh, just so the there's never been on a road. Never. Right. And okay. uh, this is this is the replica, but this this replica uh, replica is based on the pictures on the all instructions uh, because they uh, they uh, they didn't uh, keep all uh, the original documents it was someone make the picture someone made the draw and uh, and the magic uh, is the guy which is in the garage he start to uh, convert normal fiat 126 to bomber and is a one on the world fantastic Fantastic! Yes. I never seen one. Yeah, it's like a Fiat 126 pickup. Exactly. It, it looks like yeah. a, a Citroen C15. You know, yes. with the back end. But but the but the secret is is uh, you have a uh, full uh, you have a full seat on the back. You can fold this, lift it up, and right. uh, and they use like a full a full person. You, you can you can drive with the with the fantastic. Full. Yeah, oh, it's beautiful, beautiful. We go to the next Polski, which is uh, got a little bit of a roll bar in it. Nice yes. wheels, drop it down is. to the floor. Oh, yes, yes. Racing stripes. Uh, it's like a 30, 30, 31 horsepower. It's a little bit modified. Uh, the suspension, really hard. You have a, a safety cage inside. It's a typical prepare for the racing. Yeah. And uh, the owner is a really talented. Uh, he made uh, he made uh, a helmet painting, yeah, a Pavel, and uh, he he painted the um, uh, cask, yeah, right, uh, for Kubica, Robert Kubica. Right, okay, yes, yes. really good racing driver yes. with an unfortunate yeah. rally uh, accident. Fortunately, but he still still do something for the yeah, for the Lovely for car. the motorsports. Yes, uh, lovely car. Yes, another car is a Fiat 126 EL, it's the last edition, and it was like a last thousand um, cars made, which is called Happy End. And this the, this is the last edition, uh, like you have a head resist on the back, uh, the engine have a, like a, um, the, the, this is like a DPF or so, <laughs> but right, uh, okay. yeah. I not seen one. Yeah, ne never seen one. Yeah, because no. it was uh, in the last editions uh, in the EL, and um, one over clubbers because we are the club Klasyczna Polonia uh, bringers, and he, he bought this car for his daughter, which is for 18 years uh, birthday. Perfect, perfect car for it. He is perfect Definitely. car, perfect car. Which is bring us to this next car. Yes, this is in a a authentic brown color as well. It is, yes, and this is FL. FL, it was the second generation about the first one. 
right, uh, okay. because the first one is the next one. And this was uh, in the 1984, uh, the Poland's... Uh, yeah, big. Uh, big dashboard in there. Yes, big yeah. dashboard. It's already going uh, to the, the small plastic one. Plastic bumpers. Plastic bumpers. Yeah. Um, I think. I think uh, in the in the middle. Ah, and it, it got the fan for the for the heating. Right. Yes. Yes. Mine. Mine. In mine, the only fan you got really is the windrush. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With the rust. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, there the was, the was because in 1983 the license from the Fiat was sent, and it was that way start to call Polsky Fiat. Polsky. And uh, from 1984 the, they start to modify uh, the, the mirrors and the, uh, some, yeah, some interiors. Going from, go yeah. from chrome to plastic. Yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, here we've got really, really nice one. 1973 with the steering wheel on the right hand side and uh, the story is because it was made in Italy because the the right hand uh, right hand uh, side drive they made in Ita Italy and uh, this one bought our friends uh, our clubber uh, for I think for uh, 4,000 pounds and he put a lot of money to look like new it look like a from factory oh it's better than it, that it is be even better because it's not rotten <laughs> i know i've been told yes this dashboard trim yes. is so rare to get now it, it in good really, condition you, you can't really get it no, and when you get it no. it's like super expensive it is and especially all the details about the 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 switching light is like a normal switch no like a um, two gang one or one gang. Yes. It's just no more switch. <clears throat> yeah. It's a really beautiful car, it is, especially it is. with the tan interior. Yes, yes, the interior brown, uh, and even that uh, on the back, even on the back is is look different, you know. I think, it is, yeah. Uh, it's locked. Yes, okay. it's locked. But uh, all the the bumpers, all the chrome and the tow bar on it as well. <laughs> it is, yeah. Right. That way, yeah, this is really, really nice. Really nice. I never seen one with the tan interior. No. With this combination, I think it really sets it out. It is, yes, it is. That way, it was one of the first one, 1973. It's a really beautiful car. And the last one is a is a special for me uh, because this one we made in the March this year. Uh, couple um, stage from here. We had a stand and we built up this car in the three days from a scratch. We bring Here. all the body without uh, interior, without the engine, without nothing. And in the three days, we build up this car and they dro drive off on the, on the third day. And the best thing, we've got award for the best stand in the show because everyone's come around to see how we build this car and it was like uh, 11 people uh, which was uh, engaged in that we build it up and after in the July we take this car me and my friend and we drove to Portugal from Poland for charity rally which uh, we done around 5,000 miles in like five days amazing seriously it's amazing it is yeah <laughs> that was you know you know how I, my weight is 140 kilo. No, no look. No more size. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No more size. Blue. No more size for the for Yeah. Exactly. And uh, yeah, when we was drove, um, it was uh, like a 400 uh, 400 teams. It was drove uh, the cars from the east, east part of the uh, communism. You know, it's like um, old cars uh, which they was the. Uh, um, engage in that charity rally was all they could make only uh, in the uh, in the parallel the, that way in, in the communist side that way no BMWs no Volkswagen only Fiat and we was the first Fiat 126 on the finish line wow fair yeah. play Artur congratulations beautiful cars you got thank in you. that buddy thank you thank you very thank much. you Boris
hope you enjoyed today's episode from the NEC. It was an amazing, amazing event. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please press that button, hit that like button, and see you at the next time. Bye.